Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a very peculiar planet that doesn't really seem to meet our expectations when it comes to planetary formation. And more specifically, a planet that was discovered a few years ago and was recently reanalyzed to be something a little bit different, actually quite a lot different from what we originally imagined. Let's talk about this planet known as K225b and welcome to What The Math. Every once in a while we discover a planet somewhere out there that doesn't really seem to meet our expectations of what planets should be like. Some of them are a little bit too hot, others may be a little bit too large, but this planet right here that was recently reanalyzed seems to be extremely dense. Way denser than we expect planets to be. Which also means that we actually have to change what we're looking at here because this is probably not what it really looks like. Now originally back in 2015 when K225b was just discovered, we kind of thought that it was something like this, a Neptune-like gas giant, a little bit less massive than Neptune itself, with a mass of about 11 to 12 masses of planet Earth, and located relatively close to its parent star K225. In case you were wondering, K2 here represents Kepler mission part 2 during its unplanned second stage of observations of various star systems. And here's how all of this compares to our solar system with the planet itself being really really close to the parent star. But K225 is a red dwarf, which means two things. First of all, it produces a lot less heat than our sun. But second of all, it really shouldn't have any massive planets around it. Most of the planets we expect here are usually more or less similar to what you see right here in TRAPPIST-1 system. So maybe a little bit more massive than Earth, but not as massive as, for example, Jupiter. So at roughly around 11 masses of planet Earth, this was already pushing the limits of what we thought was possible around a typical red dwarf. But when it comes to the evolution of planets around star systems, there are obviously quite a lot of different questions we have. And this planet right here that was recently reanalyzed using a very new and very interesting technique, raises a lot more questions in how it was created and what exactly happened in the star system. So first of all, what is it that the scientists discovered here? Well, the planet itself that we found originally back in 2015, first of all, seems to be a lot more massive, about 25 masses of planet Earth. Which of course already suggests that the planet probably looks a lot different from what we originally imagined it to be. At the same time, it's also very likely not really a gas giant as we originally imagined it to be, but instead is a planet with a relatively solid core on the inside and a somewhat thin layer of probably hydrogen and helium on the surface. So essentially, it's a planet that might resemble a gas giant from the outside, and here's what it might look like from just above the surface here, but once you cross this atmospheric layer, which might not even be that deep, you're going to find yourself on hard surface, very very highly pressurized, Extremely hot, very inhospitable, but hard surface. The temperatures here are probably very similar to the temperatures around Venus, so probably something like anywhere from 300 to even 700 degrees Celsius on the hotter side of the planet. And just like Venus, this is also a planet that has a relatively thick layer of gas around it, but unlike Venus, this is also a really massive planet, 24 masses of planet Earth. Which also of course means that it's a very dense planet. So. Even though size-wise and even appearance-wise it might resemble Neptune, the density here is a lot closer to planet Earth, and the surface gravity here is much higher, probably about double of planet Earth as well. But from the astronomical perspective, it's almost impossible for us to understand how such a planet could be formed. Currently, there is no theory on how such a dense and very unusual planet could be formed around a red dwarf at this distance. However, further observations in this paper revealed something else about this planet. First of all, its orbit is very eccentric. It's not really a circular orbit, it's more of a really prolonged oval, meaning that the planet has an orbit that looks somewhat like this. It approaches the star right here, this is, I guess you can call it a summer, but it's very very short, and then it has its winter here, which obviously lasts a little bit longer because of the way orbit is set up. But the thing is, obviously, even at the farthest part of the orbit, it's still really, really hot on this planet. All this means is that either it becomes even more hot here, or becomes a little bit less hot in this region. At the same time, the scientists also discovered that it doesn't really have this type of an orbit either. The obliquity here, or the inclination of the orbit, is about 17 degrees, so it sort of looks like this. 
And this is really important, because when a planet has high eccentricity and somewhat high obliquity, it just means that something might have affected its orbit um, sometime in the past. And because, as you can see here, the orbital dynamics are really extreme, it means that it was probably a very large collision with an object. So in this case, what the scientists think might have happened is that two, or possibly even more than two, planets similar to this, like the ones we usually have in red dwarf systems, all collided together, thus forming this unusual massive and very dense object with a somewhat peculiar orbital parameters. Now this is really important for us to understand because understanding planetary formation is essentially the basis for us in trying to discover some other exciting planet out there that we could potentially one day inhabit. But also trying to understand how these unusual, hot, very dense and very peculiar planets formed might help us understand how planetary collisions evolve planets, but most importantly how it also helped our own planet evolve into the Earth we know today, because without collisions it would be a very different planet. At the same time, by finding this unusual planet, we can now start sort of estimating what sort of materials red dwarfs usually consist of. For example, because we know that here the core is most likely solid, because of the density and because of the mass we've seen, and also because we know that only roughly around 5% of the mass here is hydrogen and helium, we can thus start estimating what these other planets, like the ones in TRAPPIST-1 for example, are probably made out of. And also it might help us one day discover if any of them can be habitable. But another really interesting discovery in this paper is actually the tool that was used to try to re-identify the parameters of this planet. In order to get more accurate measurements of the star system here, the primary scientist in this paper used this $500 diffuser, light diffuser, the purpose of which is to take the light coming from the star and diffuse it across the entire sensor, making the actual observation a little bit more accurate. And this new technique, known as diffuser-assisted photometry, was able to reanalyze previous data, creating a much more solid observations of this unusual planet. Which of course means that it can now be applied to other planets as well, which could eventually lead to some other discoveries we didn't expect. So this technique is pretty brilliant, it's relatively cheap to achieve, and according to the scientists behind this paper, allows us to create much better observations as well. Which is really important because we can't really keep producing larger and larger telescopes, but we can refine our current techniques and create better observations by attaching tools or techniques that we already know from other fields as well. And in this case, this piece of glass is exactly what was needed to get better data about this planet. And we definitely know that this technique works because when looking at this planet, before the scientists could only predict its transit with about 30 to 40 minutes accuracy. That's actually not very accurate. After this technique, the accuracy has improved to only about 20 seconds. So now we know almost exactly where the planet is in regards to the star, which means that we now know the orbital parameters of this planet much, much better than previously. But despite this being an unusual planet, it's really the technique and the ability to see these planets with more accuracy is the most exciting part of this paper. Being able to create better observations and more accurate observations is really important for us if we want to find more exciting planets out there. But for now, that's kind of all we know about this planet and about its discovery. And if you'd like to learn more, check out the paper in the description below. On that note, once we find more unusual planets out there, or once we discover something else using this technique, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I'm also wearing right now as well. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.